Hi, and welcome back. Tonight or today, we're gonna cover the PTCB practice questions, okay? This video is being brought to you by LW Pharmacy School, and this is the video that I promise you guys we will get every Wednesday at one o'clock p.m., okay? Um, LW Pharmacy School is serving you through education. Our phone number is 903-295-5933, extension 101, okay? We're going to jump into it. You guys have been calling us from all over the world. We're getting calls from Pakistan and Poland and Egypt. And so hi to all of my friends who are overseas, as well as all of my friends who are locally um, in the country and are local in Texas. Um, hi, and thanks for calling and like sharing your feedback with me. I really, really appreciate it because the more you share, the better I can be and the better we can do with the board exam, okay? Um, PTCB, so let's talk about this real, real quick. PTCB test is called the Pharmacy Technician Certification Exam, okay? Let me cut my ring off so nobody won't call. Um, this exam is, consists of 90 questions, 10 of which are not scored, okay? If for any reason a candidate has been convicted of a drug or pharmacy-related felony or has any felony conditions during the five years before applying for the board exam, he or she does not qualify. So I've gotten some calls about, what about my background? What about this? So figured I would put this out there for you all. If you've had some type of trouble or you've gotten into some type of issues or incident, um, you want to check with your local board. Don't just take this for, you know, face value or don't take this as this is what it is you just really want to check um but again i did get this information straight from the uh from ptcb but check and just make sure don't get discouraged um if you have a high school diploma or a ged you are eligible for the board exam right now okay you do not have to go to a school you do not have to go to school in order to take the board exam in 2019. All of that is going to change in 2020. In 2020, they will require you to go to a PTCB recognized school as like LW Pharmacy School, or they will require 500 hours of clinical time inside of the pharmacy. Those are the new laws that are going to take place January 1, 2020. Uh, to maintain your PTCB certificate once you pass your board exam, you will need to renew your certification every two years. You're going to need 20 continuing education hours to do that. And your educational hours must include at least one hour of pharmacy law. Let me make that change. I don't know why that PowerPoint didn't want to act right. But anyway, it must include at least one hour of pharmacy law, okay? Um, and then one hour of medication safety as well. Uh, let's go on. The next, the first question that we're going to talk about tonight. So let me just back it up if you just now joined our uh, video. First of all, if this channel has helped you and has helped you to pass the board exam, um, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friend, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your cousin, tell everybody that you know that LW Pharmacy School is helping you pass your board exam. And anybody you know who is interested in passing their board exam, send them our way. We want to help everybody. Don't be stingy. Don't just keep us to yourself. Tell everybody about us, okay? Um, so we're just going to go over some basic questions. This is going to be a quick video. This is not going to be something real, real long. I have about 12 slides or so, and I want to get through them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, thumbs up this video and give us a like if we are helping you ASTEP, PTCB, or EXCPT exam. Boom. Um, OTCs behind the counter, okay? OTCs behind the counter is any drug that uh, pretty much has pseudoephedrine in it, okay? So the question says, which of the following OTC medication is sold behind the counter and only a controlled amount can be purchased per month, okay? Is it Robitussin DM? Is it Zyrtec? Is it Benadryl? Well, the answer is a Lager D. Ding, 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 ding. You are correct, okay? If it is an OTC behind-the-counter drug, they are only allowed to purchase 3.6 grams a day and 9 grams a month. They must be 18 years of age, and they have to show ID, okay? Day supply. Now, this is going to be about day supply, okay? And some of you guys are kind of like, getting a little screwed around with this. This is going to be fun and quick and easy. Math is not the uh, majority of the test. So if you are only practicing and studying math, ooh, you're doing the wrong thing. 
you should not just be practicing and studying math by itself. You should make sure that you are incorporating all of the subjects that are covered on that PTCB uh, blueprint to ensure your success on the exam. And you can always give me a call and I'll, I don't mind, you know, gauging and helping you to figure out where you are and what you need to study and what you really need to put more of your energy towards, okay? Uh, a prescription is written for Lexapro, Lexapro 7.5 milligrams twice a day. If Lexapro is, if Lexapro 5 milligrams is dispensed, what quantity is needed to fill a 30-day supply, okay? Lexapro is the brand and the generic is here. You, you notice it ends in P-R-A-M. P-R-A-M is the word stem for that generic drug, okay? Back to the problem. So uh, Lexapro, the doctor wrote it for 7.5 milligrams twice a day. We underline that, that's important. We at the pharmacy only have Lexapro 5 milligrams. And so we need to know how much or what quantity needs to be dispensed in order to uh, have enough medication for 30 days supply. First thing I would do is I'm going to do 7.5 times two, okay? And I'm doing it times two because it's twice a day. That gives me 15 milligrams. That tells me my daily dose or my dose per day, okay? Um, in order to get 15 milligrams and I only have five, I do five times three, and that tells me three tablets is needed per day, okay? That's something you can do. Um, and then I just simply multiply by 30, and it gives me 90 days supply, okay? Not too hard, not too easy, right on point. This is what you'll see in the pharmacy um in retail when you are uh practicing as a certified technician or even on your board exam okay so don't sleep on the retail calculations top 200 drugs which medication is used to lower cholesterol lower cholesterol oh my god the cholesterol word stem is statin and if you did not get this right and it's okay, don't worry, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. But now you know that all cholesterol medications, for the most part, the word stem for their generic is statin, okay? We know that OLOL is beta blocker, so we know that it never would have been metoprolol because that's beta blockers, okay? So again, the drug stem or the word stem for cholesterol medication is a tour of a statin. Uh, I'm sorry, that is the generic. And then the stem is statin, S-T-A-T-I-N, okay? We want to get that, that cholesterol lowered statin, stat, right away, right? The brand is Lipitor. Ah, okay, we're going to go to the next one. Metric conversions. How many milliliters are in a three or in three ounces? Okay, I have had some friends who are struggling with this on Facebook, as well as some of my friends on YouTube. Hey, that is okay, it is okay. First thing we wanna figure out, it says how many milliliters, okay? So we're gonna underline how many, just so we'll know. And then three ounces, okay? So we need to know, and then ML, almost the whole thing, the whole little question is important, okay? You need to know that one ounce equals 30 ml. One ounce equals 30 ml, okay? So if we have three ounces, we just do 30 times three, and our answer is 90. Okay, one tablespoon is five mLs, one fluid ounce is 30 mLs, one cup is 240 mLs, which is eight ounces, and then one gallon is 3,840 mLs, okay? One teaspoon, five mLs, fluid ounce, 30 mLs, one cup, 240 mLs, one gallon, 3,840 mLs, okay? I had to say it twice for the people in the back, okay? I wanna make sure you guys are hearing me today because we're gonna pass that board exam. Let's boost the confidence, okay? Pharmacology, what is the most serious side effect of opioid analgesic? Is it respiratory depression, sedation, nausea, or constipation? Let's use some common sense here. If you get constipated, is that really a serious side effect where we have to rush you to the hospital? When we think serious, we want to think about something that's going to send a person to the hospital or to the emergency room, right? Constipation, no. Okay, typically no. Um, nausea, yeah, that's pretty common. Sedation just means that you're kind of sleepy, you're groggy, you're drowsy. Respiratory depression. 
means that this person is breathing very slow. Well, it has been real. I always enjoy working with you guys. To, today has been a great day. And I know that when you go and take your board exam, if you keep watching these videos,